Hello, ladies and gentlemen. In this video, I'm going to introduce you to the switch statement, which is a cleaner way of writing certain conditionals. Sometimes we uh, don't want to use an if else statement because there's a cleaner way to do it. Um, so this is going to be our example. And there's lots of other ways you could use a switch statement. But let's say you're creating a program like this, where you um, are given from the user the number, the month number. So for example, if they have January that they're thinking about, they'll see in one, they'll type one. And uh, if it's February, they'll type in two, et cetera. And let's say we want to calculate the number of days in that month. So if they put in one, we want to output there's 31 days. Uh, if they put in two, we want to say there's 28 days, assuming it's not leap year and so forth. And so uh, what we could do is something very naive like this with uh, if else statements. Um, and this is a lot of re repetitive, tedious code where we say month is one, then the days is 31. If month is two, then the days are 28. If the month is three, then the days is 31 and so forth. I didn't bother writing them all in because there's a better way to do this. Um, and then finally, once you do all the months, you could then say there are, and then output the number of days you calculated, days in that month and finish. So if we compile this code, just to see how it works as is, um, I've got the command already written um, and we can say days in month. And I've only worked it out for, uh, you know, day a month, uh, January, February, March, in April, right? The first four months. So uh, let's try three. Uh, you can see there's 31. If we run it again, um, we could say, you know, two and there's 28 days in that month. Um, so it's kind of working, but again, not the best way to write it. Now, one more way to avoid a lot of this repetition would be to combine the number of um, months that all have the same number of days um, into one conditional. So let me just delete this. Uh, for example, if we just wanted to look at the months that have 31 days, uh, what we could do is we could set up a system where we compare um, all of those. So something like this, um, if the months is any of these, then we know there are 20 or 31 days. And so, combining with an or statement here so we you know have uh, month equals one or month equals three or month equals five and so forth any of those we can just have one statement where we set days equal to 31 and then we could have a special case for when the month is february so when month equals two two equal signs here don't want to mess that up and then uh, we can say days equals 28 again assuming it's not uh, leap year and then else all the rest have to be 30 days so we can say days equals 30 and uh, that should work just fine um, so um, this will work for everything uh, but there's an even cleaner way to do it and that's with a switch statement and so here's here's where the new information comes in um, as you're thinking about this um, oops semicolon here um, so I'm gonna uh, put this aside and show you how to do a switch statement. Now a switch statement is good whenever you have this same situation, when you have uh, a single variable being compared with individuals discrete values um, using the equal sign, the equals operator. So uh, basically we're saying, you know, if month equals one, three, five, or seven, or eight, we're comparing with very specific values, we're using the equals operator for that. And we're always using month as the one side of the comparison. Um, so if you're ever doing that with a variable, um, then a switch statement's the way Way to go and so the way the switch statement works is it says you write switch and then you'll put whatever the thing that you're comparing with for everything so in this case is month we're always comparing with month uh, looking at specific values then you have curly braces and then we list the cases here where we want to do something and you actually use the keyword case so for example uh, as a really simple switch statement not exactly what we want to do we could say case one that would be January uh, we could then see out you know um, happy new year, um, for the first month of the, of the year, right? Um, so that, that would be a very, very simple switch statement. Um, and it's equivalent to saying, you know, if month equals one, then see out happy new year. Um, now where it gets creative is what we can do is we can list a bunch of cases that do the same thing. Um, so for example, we could have all the cases that, um, are, for 30 days. So we could say case three, five, seven, eight, 10, 12. For all of those, let's set the days to be 
31. And I'll get rid of this Happy New Year statement. Uh, now, what's going to happen is um, if uh, the month is one of these, so when we get to this, when the program gets to this statement, it's going to say, you know, what is month? And if it's one, then it's going to jump right to here and it's going to do whatever's here um, and keep on going until it gets to a break statement, which we don't have. So it'll keep on going until it sees stays, sets it to 31, and then obviously it'll exit the switch statement because that's the last thing. Uh, but if month equals, for example, 12, it'll jump right to here and also do the same thing um, until it sees a break statement. So we can add a break statement here. That's just the keyword break followed by a semicolon, and that will also exit the loop. So we can do different things with our cases. For example, we can say case two here um, and say um, days equals 28. Now we're doing something a little bit different. Um, and then we can add a break statement if we wanted to. Um, so now if the month equals, for example, eight, then we'll jump down to case eight here and we'll do all the code, which basically is just setting uh, days equal to 31. And then when we get to here, we'll break out of the switch statement. And so it'll jump down here and just go and output 30, 31 days. However, if the case is two, so when, when we get to this point in the code, it'll jump right to case two and it'll set days to 28 and, and then break. And so we'll finish and output 28 days. So again, it's like an if else statement, uh, but a little cleaner written. Um, and the other thing you can do just to have an else without even uh, any cases is you can have a default case. Defaults are optional, uh, but it might be good in this case because now we can say days equals uh, 30 for any other, uh, any other month right in the year. Um, so this will be our default case. And you could put a break statement here, but you don't really need a break statement as the last statement in a switch. So let's just see how this works. Let's fit, flip back to the command line again, um, clear the screen. We'll go ahead and compile it and run it. Um, so I could try uh, two and it says there are 28 days in the month. Very cool. Uh, let's try uh, 11 for November. There are 30 days in the month. So it's you can see how it's working there. Now, one thing that's important with switch statements is not to forget the break statement. Um, if I forget this break statement here, for example, then when we get to month in, let's say the month is 12. So we'll jump down to case 12 uh, and it'll set it to 31 correctly. But since is, there's no break, it doesn't break out of the switch statement. It actually will continue on to case uh, two here and actually change the days from 31 to 28. So let's see how that works. Uh, it's a bug. It's subtle. And look, the compiler is even giving us a warning. So if you see this warning, uh, this statement may fall through uh, and point to days 31. What it means is you don't have a break statement. You're missing a break statement. And so it's actually going to do whatever's in case two, even if you're, um, you know, January or whatever. So let's go ahead and run it. That's just a warning. So it's still going to compile and run. I mean, it's still compile, and so we can still run it with a new version, uh, but we really do need to fix that warning. So, okay, let's try January, which should have 31 days, and sure enough, it's showing 28 days. So we need to fix that warning by adding a break statement here. So don't forget those break statements. They're important. Uh, they're easy to forget, especially when you're first starting out with switch statements. Um, so we could, I mean, for example, we could take advantage of that. We could say here case or, or see out happy new year again. Now, what will be kind of interesting about this is if, if the case is one, it'll output happy new year and it'll keep going because there's no break statement. So it will set the days for 31, uh, which is correct for January. So that, that would be an effective um, use of this. Um, and we'd still get this warning message though. So I'll show you what I mean. Whoops, I need to compile it. Yep, get that warning. Uh, same thing, this statement may fall through. Uh, we'll go ahead and run it. So if I put one here, you can see Happy New Year, and then there's 31 days in the month. If I put in any other uh, month, like three, it just doesn't say Happy New Year, but it does say 31 days if there are 31 days. Let's try a different one, 30 days for month four, etc. So pretty cool. Now let's uh, add a little bit, because you'll notice um, that we haven't actually considered bad input. We always need to think about uh, the user might enter in something crazy. Um, so for example, if the user enters in uh, month 
33, for example, uh, then it says there's 30 days in that month. That might not be true. Uh, so there's a couple different ways we could fix that. One would be to just check to see if the, the month is outside of the range of zero or 12. Um, so before the switch statement here, I might, uh, let's, let's check for invalid months. And here we could say, you know, if the month is less than or equal to zero or the month is greater than 12, then we've got a problem. So we could um, see out an error message. Month is not a valid month, which we could say, you know, it's between one and 12. And maybe just that'll be our error message and Dell. And then what we could do is we could return zero, exit the program early, or we could put the switch statement inside an else statement uh, to continue and just not have it done. So that will be a good check. Let's see uh, that it still compiles. Let's go ahead and fix that warning that I mentioned earlier. What we'll do for now is just get rid of the Happy New Year message. It's not really pertinent for this example. Clear the screen, compile it, run it. Um, so now what I could do uh, is enter in something like 33 again, it says not valid. But if I enter in 12, then we do get the correct results. So that's one way to do this, uh, is to have this check here. Um, another thing we can do is we can add a bunch of different statements inside our switch statement. Our switch statement, uh, just like an if else, can have multiple lines of code inside any case. Uh, so let's add some additional code so that we get the correct uh, number of days, even if it's a leap year for February. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a variable to the top for the year, uh, because we need to know what year it is in order to know if it's February. And since I only care about the year if it's February, um, I'll do the, the uh, prompt here inside of that. That way we don't bother the user with this information if we don't need it. So we'll say uh, maybe enter the year, and then we can do a CN for the year. And L to make it pretty. And um, then we, what we'll want to do is have a if statement uh, to basically decide if the days should be 28 or 29. So maybe I'll say days here 29. If it's a leap year, else um, the days will be 28. So we'll put that inside our else. All right, so what do we need to do here? Well, we know that it, uh, a, a um, leap year is every four years, um, but there's actually a little bit more complicated formula because it's not quite every four years. Um, so here's a comment that would be helpful. Leap year actually occurs in February every four years, except uh, for years that are divisible by 100, so every century. <laughs> and then also, but not if it's divisible by 400. Uh, so we can start out with the basic example here and say year mod four, so if that equals zero, that means that the year is divisible by four. Remember, uh, this is the modulus is the remainder operator. So uh, it's basically saying if we divide by four, how much do we have left over? Um, and so if that's zero, uh, then it's divisible by four. Um, but we need to make sure that uh, if this is the case, that it's also not divisible uh, by a hundred because that's a century, then it's not a leap year. So and year um, mod 100, does not equal zero. So that, that does the first two parts. Um, basically, this would only be true if it's divisible by four, but not divisible by 100. Uh, but if it is divisible by 400, we still want it. So I'll add or year mod 400 equals zero. So um, we could add extra parentheses here, due to the order of operation, but they're unnecessary because uh, the order of operation says that we'll do the ands before the ors. Um, but um, it doesn't really matter in this case. Um, and so here we can say, we can read, you know, if it's divisible by four, if that's true and it's not divisible by 100, then we'll go ahead and uh, say it's a leap year. Otherwise, if this is false, we'll look at this part here and say, well, is it divisible by 400? If that's true, then no matter what, uh, we'll set the days to 29. Um, so this will work. Um, let's test it to make sure. Um, so compile it, run it. Um, and we could say, for example, um, let's say the year 2000. That was um, not a leap year. Again, it's a multiple of um, 
oops, 2000 is invalid month. Uh, so I was like, wait a second. Okay. 20 would be the month. And then the year would be, uh, 2000 and, uh, and sure enough, it is a leap year and it is a multiple of 400, right? 2000, uh, you can divide 2000 evenly by 400. So that makes sense. Let's try, uh, 2020. Is this a leap year? Uh, oops, I'm ah, sorry, month 12. Uh, okay, now 2020. Uh, yes, in fact, it is. So again, a leap year. Uh, now 2021, we know is not a leap year. Uh, sorry, keep doing that. Month February 2021 for the year. Uh, 28 days, good. Um, how about, uh, let's see, um, 2000 um, and... Uh, what would be a multiple of 100? So 2,100, that would be the next one. That This should not be a leap year, right? It's a multiple of 100, and it's not a multiple of 400. Um, so sure enough, it's not a leap year. It just has 28 days. Uh, let's try uh, 2,104. <laughs> that should be a leap year. Sure enough, 29 days. So I think we're working. Um, and it seems to be working well. This modulus operator is super handy for a lot of different things. Another thing we could do is actually uh, simplify our code a little bit. If we uh, assume that the user might be putting in values uh, with months that are across multiple years. So for example, if they put in the month uh, 13, for example, uh, then that might actually mean January. You know, if you're thinking 13 months from now or 13 months from the beginning of the year, we'll wrap back around and it'll be January again. Uh, so instead of doing this code right here for invalid months, what we could do is uh, say mod 12 here inside the switch statement. Check this out. So if, um, if, if it's one, for January, uh, and we divide by 12, then we're gonna get, um, we're going to get um, uh, one still. So one divided by 12 has a remainder of one. Two divided by 12 has a remainder of two. So it, it works perfectly for the values one through uh, 11. And then 12 actually becomes zero, right? 12 divided by 12, that goes in evenly and we got zero left over. So the one thing we'd have to do is change case 12 to be case zero. And I'm just putting it here and getting rid of it here uh, just to keep the order consistent. Um, so 12 divided by 12 will give us a zero and then that'll be 31 days. Now, here's what's interesting. If it's 13, 13 divided by 12 has goes in evenly one time, but has one left over. Uh, so then we'll be case one. And sure enough, that'll be 31 days. Um, and then 14, that'll be uh, evaluate to two. 14 divided by 12 has two left over. So uh, we'll go down to case two and uh, we'll do our leap year calculation to determine if there's 29 or 28 days. Pretty cool. So just some things you can do with a switch statement. Again, just in review, and the important thing to think about is that uh, if a switch statement, you want to use a switch statement whenever you have a case, a situation where you're comparing a single variable uh, to multiple individual units um, that are discrete. So if you're comparing with ranges, if you've got greater than or less than, then it makes sense to use an if statement. Um, or if you're um, comparing with just one thing, one value, like if, if the month is January, that's all I care about, um, then obviously it would make uh, it would be just as simple to use an if statement. Uh, but whenever you're using equals equals uh, and you've got the same variable being used for lots of equals equals, uh, lots of uh, equals operators, then use a switch statement instead. And this might look like, and it is, more lines of code than uh, the code we were looking at where we had that compound if statement, um, but it's actually less code overall. Um, so more lines of code, but there's less lines per there's less code per line. So it's actually still very easy to read. Um, so definitely a good tool in your tool bag. All right, I'm gonna just compile this and run it. But uh, that's it for the details of this particular uh, little tutorial on the switch statement. Um, let's try 14 for that example. Sure enough, we're in February. So we could put um, again, 20, 24 maybe. Uh, sure enough, that's a leap year kind of like those leap years. Um, how about 2022? Not a leap year. All right. Hope you enjoyed it. As always, let me know if you have any questions.